If my family never visits me, that's on them. They know who they are out there. They know that we're related. If they don't start acting more like family instead of strangers and they don't visit me, especially my brother, that hurts. That hurts a lot. When your own brother doesn't talk to you. When your own brother doesn't allow you to be happy with someone that you want to be happy with. My mom and dad didn't have a perfect relationship. But yet they lasted forever. What's wrong if I want to be with someone like Vincent? If he changes, if he stops drinking maybe, if he doesn't cuss at me or yell at me or cheat on me like he probably did cheat on me, maybe if he truly changed, I know a lot of programs out there, they abuse people. They lie. They make you think that you have faults. When they have faults themselves. Even police officers have faults. Even church members and clergy members have faults. Even... Teachers have faults. Doctors make mistakes. You know why doctors make mistakes? I'll tell you why. When I was born on May 4th, 1973, the doctor that delivered me was an old doctor where he shouldn't have been delivering babies anymore. My mom told me he was old. I should have been born to Syrian section. But instead, they yanked me out of my mother's womb. Where my fists were real tight like this. With the cord wrapped around my neck and my face. My eyes were real red. Do you know what that causes? It causes a severe attachment problem that develops in baby to adulthood. And when someone has that kind of problem, they have trouble expressing themselves and letting go. Letting go of people that they love or people that have Touch their heart. And I have every right to bring a lawsuit against Fresno Community Regional Hospital in Fresno for allowing a doctor that should have been delivering babies to, to deliver me the wrong way. Because of the way he delivered me, he did not catch my heart murmur when I was born or when I was in the womb. You know when they cut my heart murmur and my congenital heart defect? It was when I was real sick at two and a half years old. And they told my dad that if I didn't get the surgery, I would have died at 12 years old. And you know what causes congenital heart defects? The chemical agent orange caused it. From spraying it on my dad in Vietnam. It also caused Cancer and other health problems. Immune disorders. Like type 2 diabetes. I 
and also endocrinologists, they lie. Did you know that the insulin and the pills they give, that is what causes diabetes complications because I've been reading a book about the diabetes cure. It says in that book a lot of people died from diabetes complications because of the medication that's prescribed. It wasn't because they weren't eating right or anything. The medication itself causes complications. It damages the heart. It damages the kidneys. It, dam it damages the liver and the stomach and the pancreas. You know why I feel like that happens? Or you know why I think? Or you know why I feel that's true? Because I feel strongly my mother had diabetes when I was growing up. She never got to go to a doctor because she didn't have the right health insurance. She didn't have no health insurance until my dad got a big back pain from the veterans because he had to fight for his 100% disability income. And I feel that my mom had diabetes, but they did not have health insurance. My mom didn't die. My mom didn't take medication. Why is it that I have to take medication? A lot of people go to war, but my dad was drafted. And when the Vietnam veterans came home, you know what they did to them? They threw rocks and tomatoes at them and spit in their faces. The soldiers over there, it was not their fault that they were out there in that Vietnam War. They should have never been condemned or treated that way. Yeah, they give them parades now. But back then, the government could have prevented them from being, from tomatoes and rocks and everything being thrown at them when they came home. But the government told them to stay hush-hush, not talk about what happened over there. You know what that caused? That caused a lot of Vietnam veteran soldiers to suffer 5150 breakdowns. Because they couldn't talk about what happened. Until years later when things started coming out in the open more. My dad suffered in silence sometimes. Sometimes he would have my mom take us away from the house so we wouldn't see him like screaming and shouting and having bad terror nightmares from the war. You know what? I've been going through the same thing my dad used to go through. And it's not a fun game. Every night I wake up like three or four times. With nightmares. I pray to God to heal me. He doesn't heal me. All I want is to be healed of this spitting that they left me with. Now I want Vincent to come back home.
because I'm having trouble paying my bills. And I can't take it anymore. I can't take it because I can't even do my homework sometimes because I'm severely depressed. From the spinning and everything. And not having anybody to talk to. Just my puppies. And when Daisy died, when my little dog son and sister Daisy died, I wanted to keep her two puppies to have something to remember Daisy from. And the person that my boyfriend rehomed them to, the person called me a weirdo just because I told them they're rightfully my puppies. Because they were. Daisy was my dog. Daisy's puppies were rightfully mine. If anybody's hearing this, I want my Daisy little puppies back. I don't care if I have to pay them back their money. Her puppies were the only thing I had left of my little dog, Daisy. I was grieving Daisy and I was grieving my sister-in-law the whole month of October. Grieving is something that doesn't just go away overnight. I, I was also grieving Vincent because he's been in jail and I wrote him a letter. He never wrote back to me. All I wanted to know if he was if he was still in love with me, or if he even cared about me, or if he even thought about me. My brother doesn't talk to me. Vincent's in jail right now, but my brother still doesn't talk to me. Sometimes I'm still scared to go back home with my brother and sister. I have my reasons to be scared to go back home, to be around my brother. I'm not going to say what they are, but God knows what they are. God knows what they are. <laughs> God knows why I get scared to go back home. My sister knows why I get scared to go back home to be around my brother. Even Vincent knows why I got scared to go back home. Vincent was the only one that I ever told my deepest secrets to. I don't think I could ever tell my deepest secrets to anybody else. My brother is an alcoholic. You know what an alcoholic does when they drink real bad, and get drunk.
I felt like my brother abused me after my dad died. That's right. I felt like my own brother abused me after my dad died. He didn't allow me to date one little guy named Samuel. He didn't allow me. When Vincent came along, he told Vincent, like, threatening him, like, if you don't, love, if you don't really love my sister, you won't show up again. You know what else happened? You know, everybody leaves dirty dishes in the sink, right? There are only like a little few dishes in the sink. As a person that hires care providers to be taking care of me, I hired Vincent. You know why? Because I had a choice. I could hire anybody I wanted to. And they said Vincent wasn't doing his work. He was doing his work. He was. He helped me clean my room. They just didn't notice it that night. Not December 23rd, but May 20th, 2019. When my brother got real jealous because I gave the job to Vincent. <coughs> and his wife had cancer. If she had cancer, why was she still smoking and drinking and getting drunk with my brother? The night of May 20th, 2019, the sheriff came to our house on Salent. They said false lies about me and Vincent. Just because Vincent had tattoos and stuff, they said they were going to take Vincent to jail. And they said they were going to take me to a mental health system hospital. When, yeah, maybe I do a cup toward my sister-in-law, but I didn't hit her. She's the one that came after me, hitting me in my left eye, my eye that I had eye surgery in. And my brother just stood there letting his wife hit me and hit me. And I had trouble fighting back. I tried to fight back. Because I didn't like the way his wife was hitting me. And you know, my diagnosis the next day at an emergency in Selma, I suffered a contusion and a concussion because of his wife hitting me in my left eye. And then my brother pushed me. Whether or not he pushed me to stop the fight, he pushed me and I fell to the ground and I hit my head. Then the Fresno County Sheriff had the nerve to say that just because his wife had cancer, how come they didn't get arrested? Vincent never hit me in my eye. The police people are not fair to people with mental health illnesses. Because they only hear one side of the story. How would you expect me to feel after being hit in my eye and being pushed to the ground? Hitting my head. I could have cracked it open. 
I could have died. They said I had a contusion and a concussion. The next day, the adventure in Noriega took me to the emergency. And you know what? My brother and my sister-in-law, they did not once even call me to see how I was doing. The person that protected me took me in was Vincent Noriega. Yeah, maybe he disrespected my apartment, making nasty videos and stuff. Maybe he put his hand on my wrist. Maybe he cheated on me and cussed at me. Or hit himself in the face in front of me and hurt me when he hit himself in the face. I feel that the people who hurt me most was my own family members. Not my mom and dad. Because my mom and dad were always there for me. They weren't perfect, but they were there for me. My brother didn't always drink until he started going out with his friends. Today I was talking to my sister. She's saying that I have bad habits. I don't have bad habits. I don't smoke. I don't drink. I drink on special occasions. I don't drink every single day. I don't get drunk. I don't smoke cigarettes. I don't even like to smoke weed. But you, I will tell you this one thing. I do like to take weed edibles. But smoking it, I will never smoke it because I cough a lot. Yeah, I might have a problem with weed edibles. But I don't do it every day. I only do it when my... Like, because... I don't have no one to talk to. If I had more friends in my life to visit me or something, or if my brother came and visited me and talked to me, I feel that I could stop doing edibles. Because I've stopped before for three whole months. For three whole months, I didn't touch edibles. Kill. I'm not going to go there. For three whole months, I did not touch any weed or any kind of weed edibles. So I know I can stop on my own. My mom and dad, they were the best parents anybody could have. Yeah, I saw abuse growing up. But my mom and dad, they never divorced. They stayed with each other. Because that's how strong love is when two people love each other. They stay together until they die. And that's what I wanted with Vincent. I wanted to be with Vincent forever and ever. I pray every day for him to change and to come out of jail.
There are good things about Vincent that nobody knows. Like he made me laugh. He was funny. He took me to the gym so I could lose weight and exercise. He drove six hours back and forth to Las Vegas because I don't know how to drive. I never learned how to drive. Vincent was the first person who accepted me for me that I didn't know how to drive. He drove six hours back and forth to Las Vegas. The first time in my life. We spent the night over there and when we came back, we drove six hours back home. We thought we would have to spend the night at another hotel. He wanted to get home to be with our puppies.